All right, well, happy Friday, everyone. We made it to the end of the work week. Yay! As Amos so eloquently demonstrated, yay! As he's laying down to rest. We have had a busy day already playing outside and having lots of fun. So, so today we're going to talk about uh, a verse from Mark chapter 2, um, particularly verse 17, but we're going to dig into it some more. But before we do that, let's start out with some prayer. Gracious God, thank you for this Friday. Thank you for every single person that uh, takes the time to sit and listen to me talk about your word. Uh, God, we give you thanks for everything that you've given us uh, especially Jesus, you know, coming and saving us and, and being a light in the darkness. And in Jesus' name, amen. So today we're going to talk a little bit about this particular verse in Mark. Um, we actually, I, I, me personally, I don't think that I've read a whole lot of Mark before. I mean, I've read the whole thing, but often I get drawn more to like John or to Matthew's gospel. Uh, but I think in this uh, verse today, it's got some really good points. So let, let me read the verse and we'll go from there. So this is from the Passion Translation. And uh, I'm picking that for a reason, but I'll let you know in just a second why. So it says, But when Jesus overheard their complaint, he said to them, and these are the red letters, Who goes to the doctor for a cure? Those who are well or those who are sick? I've not come to call the righteous, but to call those who are sinners and bring them to repentance. Now, I think, <laughs> I well, I don't think, I just find it really funny. I, I do, I think it's funny that the word righteous is in quotes in this translation. I think that's awesome. And in further uh, reading about it and everything, the, in, in, uh, um, in researching it, the word in Greek doesn't really mean righteous, like as in, good or wholesome like righteousness like how we think of jesus being righteous no it's like the other kind the self-righteous the this idea that this perspective of they got it all figured out and uh they don't need anything else and so it's really funny that jesus uses this term uh, and then also physicians back then, people, a doctor and everything was a little different than how we think of doctors today. But that's not really the point of all this. The point of this is to say that yeah, they, they thought they had it all figured out. And here Jesus is uh, calling them out on this. But to get to perspective, let's dig a little deeper. Let's go back a couple of verses, uh, four actually, and uh, let me read that to you. So starting out at verse 13 uh, in Mark chapter 2, and it says this, Jesus went out to walk near Lake Galilee, and a massive crowd gathered, so he taught them. And as he walked along, he found Levi. Now, another name for Levi, if you don't know this, is Matthew. He found Matthew. The son of Alphaeus sitting at the tax booth. I can see that, like from Charlie Brown, where um, what's-her-face is sitting in the little booth and wants her nickel. Anyways, um, collecting taxes, he approached him and said, Come, follow me. Immediately, he got up from his booth and began to follow Jesus. Later, Jesus and his disciples went to have a meal with Levi. Again, that's Matthew. Among the guests in Levi's home were many tax collectors and notable sinners sharing a meal with Jesus, for there were many kinds of people who followed him. But when the religious scholars and the Pharisees found out that Jesus was keeping company and dining with sinners and tax collectors, they were indignant. So they approached Jesus, Jesus' disciples, and said to them, Why is it that someone like Jesus defiles himself by eating with sinners and tax collectors. And now we come back to our verse for the day, which is, but when Jesus overheard their complaint, he said to them, who goes to the doctor for a cure? Those who are well or those who are sick? I've not come to call the righteous, but to call those who are sinners and bring them to repentance. Now, in sermons that we've probably heard, and if you've not heard, you probably will hear at some point, this verse brings up this idea that Jesus did not come for the Sadducees and Pharisees, like this idea to save them. He came for the rest of us sinners. But then, actually, we're 
also reminded, I believe it's in Romans, that we've all perished, like we, we've all sinned, so therefore we've fallen short of the glory of God. That, that's the word I was looking for, which would cause us to perish, of course. So I get to thinking that, well, Jesus is he's for everyone. Doesn't matter who you are, if you're self-righteous or not, right? However, what comes to mind is this idea of self Righteousness, this idea that you can save yourself, you can do or you can learn from Scripture, enough Scripture to get, to get it all figured out. And that's really what Jesus is talking here about, is this thing, this idea that we don't have it all figured out. And we still need the doctor, we still need him to fix us. Now, in Methodism with John Wesley, this whole concept of going on to perfection, that, that once we take Jesus into our lives and allow him to to change us and to walk alongside God in this process of being changed, that God is in this process of continually uh, changing us to be more like him. <laughs> what better way uh, to live? You know, I, I wish that I would have a doctor all the time with me, walking with me. Anytime something were to happen, the doctor would be there to fix me. And maybe we're getting a little closer to that because we have like WebMD on our phone, but not really because everybody knows WebMD just makes you paranoid. But with all that said, what does that mean for our churches? What does that mean for our, us as a group of Christians, as a group of followers of Jesus? I think sometimes, well, I, I know for sure that I have been to churches that felt like they had it all figured out. And I, me personally, I, I didn't feel connected there. I didn't feel like, what is there to learn? How is it that we can learn together? And then I've been in places that were just so in tuned with what God wanted them to be doing in the moment. And it, I just never wanted to leave. And I think that's the difference is that perspective. It's our perspective. It doesn't really matter like what programs you have because really the programs would match what you need to be doing if you had the right perspective. If you were truly following Jesus and allowing Jesus to be changing you, that he's not uh, done with you, that we are going on to perfection. And so this concept that we have this perfect church for everyone, that's a lie that's a that doesn't exist there is no perfect church yet it's going on to perfection and if we could just live that way that where we offer this idea that to let Jesus in to heal because we all need to be healed and we're all in this continual healing process for us to deny that I think that's what's gotten us to where we are, uh, it, whether we say it's in our culture or in our society or in our youth or our children. It's this idea that, you know, you accept Jesus and all of a sudden you're perfect. So that means everything that you do. No, it doesn't work that we all know that. And so we're always chasing after Jesus if, in, in that in that aspect. But if we just accept this, this fact that Jesus is our physician that is just there with us to heal us when we break, to heal us from our brokenness from before we accepted him into our life, I think we would be way better off. And so really this verse is about where your heart is. Where is your heart because you can know all about God. You can know all about Scripture. You can have it, the whole thing memorized. Just like these Sadducees and Pharisees. Now, they didn't have the New Testament to memorize, but they had all the other books. They had all the other laws. They had it all figured out. And not only did they have them memorized, they lived and breathed them. It was their everyday life. It was their culture. It was who they are. And even that wasn't enough. But in their minds, they thought they had it all figured out. They had it all worked out. And I think as we walk in our faith, that moment that we think that we have it all figured out is where we have stepped into a world where Jesus 
where we just don't acknowledge him that we still need him oh we used him for this moment in time right that and we talk about this all the time oh accept jesus as your lord and savior but there's more to it than just that one moment, that, that justifying moment that happened so long ago on the cross. That moment where we've accepted that. It continues on after that. It continues on in our life as we show kindness and love to people where we demonstrate justice. That's where we need to be and where we need to be headed to whether it be us individually us as a small group maybe getting together or even us as a church whether it be our local church or our church as a whole so that being said take these words from mark and let them dig deep into your heart and have a great Friday, and I will see you guys this Saturday and maybe this Sunday. But remember this, that Jesus has not come to call the righteous, but to call those who are sinners and bring them to repentance. May your heart be in repentance. Amen, amen, and amen.